a great pleasure to have you all worshipping with us today. And we're going to start with our Easter acclamation. The Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. And now we begin with our first hymn. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has this is the day when he rose again, when he rose again. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day when he rose again, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day when he rose again. The day, this is the day when the Spirit came, when the Spirit came. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day when the Spirit came, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day when the Spirit came. Welcome back. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. When I say, in your mercy forgive us, Please reply, Amen, Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Amen, Lord, have mercy. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, Lord, forgive us. Amen. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you your sins and free you from your sins heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have our first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. 
the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even so your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the dirty is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them, are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We've all been hearing rather a lot of news lately. Maybe you go and hide under the table when it comes on and someone else wants to watch it on television. It does seem to be rather a lot of bad news. The one bit of good news is that in the middle of all this coronavirus epidemic, more and more people are starting to pray. And people who hadn't been to church at all are turning much more to online services Services like this, services on Zoom, services on um, YouTube, and recorded services and live ones. And this is something that's positive in this difficult time. But I'm aware that in this time when people are going through great, great difficulties, they may actually feel that God's very far away. It is very, very distant. And in our Gospel reading, you will remember what Jesus taught his disciples. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. You know him because he abides with you and he'll be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. And in our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, 
you have the words of St. Paul, quoted here by Luke, who wrote the Acts. And he found in Athens that they had um, statues to many, many gods, but they believed they were the gods. But they had one, just in case they'd missed one who might be angry, they had one to the unknown god. That's who you really ought to get to know, said Paul. That's the one I serve. But he's not just a, st a statue like the others. He's not just one to put in the row along with the others. He is the living God. He is the one who created all of us, created the world and everything in it, created us and gave us life. And in explaining more about God, Paul goes on to say, that from an ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God, and perhaps grope and find him. He wanted us to look for him and to know his presence and find him. But Paul adds a ride on to that. Though indeed, he's not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. God isn't far away. In horrible times, it feels far. To many people now who are bereaved at this time of COVID, it seems very, very far indeed. Many may have found it very difficult to keep their trust in God at all. And yet, to an extent, we know this at St. Martin's, as we're mourning the loss of Josephine. And also, a few weeks before, of Joanna, two of our church members who meant so much to us. In these times, it's easy to become distant from God, to be doing the things we normally do, without really being aware of his presence or his closeness in any way. And I just want to say one or two words about how do we remind ourselves that God is with us? Well, one way we look at what's written in scripture and look at the words that Jesus promised us, the words that Paul wrote describing him, about God's closeness to us. And then we remember that Jesus himself, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, said, Lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. He promised to be with us. And I'll finish with an illustration that helps me to think of it anyway. I hope you forgive it being rather every day. And to some men who do not know what is this piece of equipment I'm talking about, maybe someone can explain it to you afterwards. It's called a washing machine. Some think of God like a laundrette attendant who comes along, puts in all the things that are needed for the load of washing to be done, sets it up, sets it going, sees it going round and goes away. Many people think of God as kind of very distant and just keeping an eye on the world from a distance, but not very involved, many of us. But that isn't our God. Our God isn't like the laundrette attendant. Our God is like the soap. Our God is in there with us. Our God is in there with all the dirt, in there with all the heat, and in there with the spinning and spinning that seems never to finish. He's in it with us. And that's what he promises us. That when we're in the very worst of it, he's very especially there. And he's not going to criticise us for our lack of faith. 
when he was called to the house of Martha and Mary because their brother Lazarus had died, he didn't accuse them of lack of faith. He wept with them. When Jesus got to the grave of Lazarus, he knew he was going to raise Lazarus. He knew anyway there was resurrection at the last day. He knew about resurrection. He, he, he didn't just believe it, he knew it. And yet, when he got to the grave of Lazarus, he wept. He knows our feelings, our emotions, and what we're going through. And he's not distant. And he's not failing in understanding. He's absolutely there in whatever we're going through. And he's with us. My prayer for everyone is that you will all know the presence of the Lord with you. You will not just believe in abstract, but you will feel and be aware of his presence. And that you will help others to come to know him and his love. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Lord, we rejoice in your glorious resurrection and your triumph over death and powers of evil. We thank you for the promise of new life that we have through you. We ask that the light you shine into the world may shine on us, our families and our friends and our communities and shine into all the dark areas in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church of England and ask that you give Archbishop Justin and all our bishops wisdom and strength as they guide and lead your people through the great difficulties of these times. We ask for the strength and guidance for Bishop Peter, now he is acting Bishop of Chelmsford, as well as Bishop of Barkin. We pray for Bishop Stephen Contrell as he prepares to be Archbishop of York and for the process to find who God is calling to be the next Bishop of Chelmsford. We pray for the Diocese Consultation opening on the 11th of May and ask you to guide everyone involved in the process in our diocese and nationally that we may discern the person you have chosen to lead our diocese. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world affected by coronavirus. We pray for the sick, the dying, the bereaved and those who have lost work and are worried how they will survive. Today we pray especially for each of those countries where we have friends and family. We pray for Newham Hospital and the Nightingale Hospital and all those who work in the NHS in East London and ask that you keep them safe, strengthened and bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to remember our sister Josephine. We ask for your blessing on all involved in her funeral and the St. Martin's YouTube memorial service. We thank you for all she means to each of us and to St. Martin's. We remember our church members and others we know who have passed away during this time of COVID. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We remember Valerie from the Kumon School meeting in our hall, whose husband passed away, and those in our families or close friends who mourn, and ask you to comfort them in their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the sick and elderly in our fellowship. Especially we pray for Liz Upton, Brother Donald, Belle and John Veers, Elfrida Gray, Annie Fitzgerald, Doris and Dorothy. We pray for the homeless and all those who lack basic necessities, that you protect all of them and that they receive the help they need. Be with each of us this Easter season, and may we share the hope we have in your resurrection. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Our collect for today. God our Redeemer, you've delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recorded us to life, 
so by his continual presence in us, he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your, risen, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And we join in the prayer Jesus taught us. Please join in in your own language. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you today and always. Amen.